Hi everyone, and welcome back. I'm gonna start this video off with a question. Out of all the places I've been in Mexico during the last two and a half years of being in and out of this awesome country, which one has been the most requested location by viewers for me to return to? You're gonna find out in this video. El increíble y hermoso Jerez de García Salinas, a tiny pueblo mágico in the state of Zacatecas, Mexico. In 2019, I visited Jerez for the first time. I was impressed by its beauty and color, charm and unique character, as well as its welcoming Jerezanos, describing it as Mexico overloaded. This is part nine of my 2020 Mexico series. This year, I've purposely visited brand new destinations such as Tula, Toluca, and Nesawal Coyotl, with the intention of drawing your attention away from the reality of this year to remind you that it's still very much possible to visit some very special destinations. And that's exactly what Jerez is. This video is a showcase of one of my golden Mexico destinations. It's time to give Jerez de Garcia Salinas the attention it deserves. Enjoy, amigos. That's right, we're back in the beautifully, stunningly, incredibly amazing Jerez de Garcia Salinas, or just Jerez, if you want to call it that. And I was here about a year and a half ago, as with Zacatecas, but back then it was only like an afternoon trip. I only had a, like a couple of hours to explore, and I was absolutely blown away by this place. I've been to a lot of Pueblo Magicos in Mexico, Magico, Mexico, <laughs> before, but for me this one, it's kind of streets ahead. It's a di in a different league to other ones because I don't know what it is. I think I think when you have a special connection with somewhere, you can't really put your finger on it. But one of the things I do like is the buildings here and the artwork and the paintwork on buildings. It has that real rustic feel. It's, it's an Instagram person's dream. It's just beautiful. And of course it is November the 3rd today. So Dia de Muertos has just happened. We're gonna check out a point over there where I've just been to to do with Dia de Muertos. It's amazing. So we're just off the central square, which obviously 2020 it's closed because of COVID. In the video last year, I did go in there. Spectacular. But this building that I've just been to is the um, municipal uh, building, government building. And inside is like a, a garden that's devoted to Dia de Muertos. And it's actually the first thing I've seen that has really been focused around Dia de Muertos this year for this Mexico trip. And it's, uh, I believe it's devoted to a guy called Ramon Lopez Vellade. I've got to be honest, I hadn't heard of him before I went in there, so I haven't done any research about him. So if you are from Jerez or you know of this guy, please feel free to correct me in the comments. But there is a, a sign up there in Spanish that I've kind of translated in my head. Um, he was um, a guy that was born in Jerez, I believe. He moved to Mexico City. He was a writer and poet specializing in topics such as eroticism and death, muerto. And um, he was also a, a professor of literature at university in Mexico City, I believe. Like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, it's just beautiful in there. You've got the central sort of fountain that's decorated with uh, sempasuchil and skulls for Dia de Muertos and at the back is a, an ofrenda and I wanted to talk about ofrendas because I've actually learned a bit more about ofrendas than I previously knew so there's like I think there's seven sort of steps on there and I believe you can have different kind of ofrendas so you have ones with three five seven and they they basically symbolize the the steps you have to take to reach the afterlife I think the last one is like purgatory and, and stuff, stuff like that but also on there there is there are things which kind of represent certain things so obviously with offenders you you can put whatever you want on there you know things that your loved ones enjoyed and loved like you know you have pan de muerto of course bread of the dead um you can put alcohol on there whatever but there's lots of different different sort of things on there that really represent um the the life of this guy i guess and i, I didn't want to film in there because it's quite quiet and uh, sort of somber so i that's why i came outside um but yeah it's just a really beautiful thing to see it's, it's absolutely spectacular and when you know we are in 2020 and, and things have been cancelled very much in terms of Dia de Muertos something like this is just beautiful 
this is what I mean about the the buildings and the paintwork. I, you know, I'm not the expert on paint and, and building decoration, but is it the brushwork or something that gives it that kind of rustic feel? And, you know, when the sun is shining on these buildings, it's just so unique. You know, each shop kind of has its own character and design and decoration. It's just so special. And especially with these lovely blue skies, look at it. Good old Mexico, even though it's November. There's the spectacular Iglesia that made me cry last time, right over there, outside that gate. How embarrassing, but you know, that's a thing about Mexico. Sometimes it makes you cry. It makes me cry anyway, I wanna cry now. But it looks kinda of yellow, I think, on camera, but in reality, I think it's more of like a, a more of a beigey, orangey, yellowy color. And that's, that's another thing about these buildings, that, uh, the colours are just out of this world. I, I can't think of any more superlative to describe them, but you know, you have these uh, sort of terracotta y, yellowy, orange, burnt orange, burgundy colours everywhere, and it just sets the place alight. Look at that church. Right next to the church is one of the most famous buildings in Jerez, which surprisingly I didn't cover last time. It's the Edificio de la Torre building. And it's just very grand in terms of the design. And I've read that the, the doorways were designed by a homeless Indian child. Crazy, crazy history in Jerez. Let's have a look around the other side. Let's see if the lighting is any better. It is. Look at that. It's very grand and imposing as well. Right, great timing motorbike, as always. Um, I was gonna say, if you are a new subscriber or you haven't seen my previous Hedes video, I'll link it up above somewhere. Um, and in that one, I did talk a lot about the history of Hedes. It's very interesting, as with everywhere in Mexico. And you might know of Hedes de la Frontera, which is in the south of Spain. Basically, the, the founders, I believe, of this Hedes came from that Hedes. How many times can I say Hedes? But of course, in Spanish Spanish, it's Hedes. Yeah, I think that's right. Jerez, Jerez, like Barcelona, if you know what I mean. Anyway, we're gonna have some food in a bit because um, there is some awesome food I wanna try here that I've never had before. This series is about new things, so that's what we're gonna do. And while I'm here, actually, I believe this bar is quite a famous bar in Jerez. I was reading about it a couple of days ago, or you could say cantina, because it's a, you know, it's like a typical Mexican cantina. Normally the doors are like a bit smaller, like, you know, in the middle, like those sort of old Western cowboy bars. Um, I read that it's no longer a bar, but I just looked through the window and it looks like it is. Um, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we might go to a cantina later, we'll see. They are quite daunting, I must say, especially if your Spanish isn't great, but it's, um, it's a nice experience. Ah, so I've just stumbled across this theatre, Teatro Hinojosa, Hinojosa, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, obviously it's closed at the moment, but it is a spot which many people, many of you from Jerez, recommended me to visit. I believe it used to be a barracks of some kind. Apparently it's quite impressive inside. So yeah, if you come to Jerez, outside of 2020, it could be an interesting spot to see. <laughs> I just met up with a YouTube subscriber, Larry. Hi, Larry. <laughs> and um, I thought I'd get some street churros while I was at it. Only cinco pesos, five pesos. I um, always feel quite guilty. I tried to give the guy 10, but he said no. I didn't want to be rude by insisting to give him the 10. But um, yeah, churros as always, beautiful. So before we eat, there's something I wanted to say. So. I don't often come back to places that I've been to before. Okay, Belgrade, Mexico City, San Luis, Zacatecas. But Jerez, that it's not just because of Jerez that I'm back here. When I did that video last year, I was, honestly, my heart was warmed by the feedback I had from that video. I didn't realize so many people were from Jerez, had family connections in Jerez, used to live in Jerez. And, you know, the amount of recommendations I've had and the, the kind of love, really, for the fact that some weirdo foreigner guy is coming to a little place in Mexico called Jerez de Garcia Salinas and doing videos here was awesome so I just want to take that moment to say thank you very much because it really makes a difference to me. This is a common sight in Jerez and also Zacatecas itself drums tamborazo tambor drum 
in Spanish, I believe. Um, as well as drums, you know, brass instruments, trombones, trumpets, massive sort of, um, what would you call them, massive tubers or something, I don't know. Um, tenor horn, I used to play that years ago. Um, but you'll see them everywhere um, in the evening as well. There'll be musicians playing. And um, again, it's something, I mentioned it in Zacatecas, I didn't see tambodas were there, but you see it in Jerez. And not just brass instruments, as you can see, guitars, is that a cello? Painted in a rather interesting colour scheme. I might show you a bit of the uh, tamborazo actually now. It's actually from last night because I'm leaving today before it really starts in the evening. So um, here we go. Right, outside this gorgeousness is more gorgeousness inside. Thank you to Paulina. She is a viewer who lived in Jerez for many years and she's recommended two places in this video where we're gonna have food. We're gonna do it backwards because the other place is near the bus station. I'll grab it later. We're gonna have a bit of dessert first. We're at Nevaria Paraso, um, which I think is um, snow paradise, right? Um, we're gonna have some nieves if it's open. Wow, just looking at the sign from 1940, established in 1940. Awesome, bienvenidos. Wow, I really like this place. It almost has kind of a, I don't know, a New York diner feel, if you know what I mean, with all these red seats and, and seats around um, and all these pictures on the wall of, um, I guess, the history of Zacatecas. There we go, look, that's the building I'm in. Is that in the, the 60s? I don't know. Oh, 70, 71, I think, yeah. Años 70, 71. Ferrocarril, ferrocarril, that's one another word I can't pronounce, railway. <laughs> yeah, wow, it's really interesting. It's like the history of Jerez in an ice cream place or Nieves, Sorbet, if you know what I mean. And look at that, it's like a, an old style jukebox, I guess, for music. Digital video jukebox, wow, okay. Ooh, chocolate Nieves. Gracias. Can I just stop for a moment and say, I'm very happy right now. How often does that happen? <laughs> I'm in Jerez with music playing outside, with Nueves in like a famous historical place. I could cry again. I'm going to cry again. Why do I keep crying in Jerez? But let's have a look at this Nieves. It feels a lot more like ice cream. If you saw the Toluca video, um, that was much more like sorbet, if you know what I mean. And this is as well, but it's, I guess, you have sorbet, you have ice cream, you have nieves. Yeah, it's, it's kind of its own thing. Mm. Oh, oh my God. This isn't just any old chocolate, nieves. Yeah, you have the, you know, the, the chocolatey taste that you would expect initially, but then it's just aftertaste of amazingness. Mm. It's beautiful. Thank you, Paulina. Muchas gracias, amiga, for recommending this place. Mm. Let's do a bit of a close focus shot because you may know I've smashed my front camera on my screen. That's why the uh, the shots are, I've got that light glare on. Um, look at that. Nieves. With chocolate sauce. And listen to the music outside. Magical. The lady who served me in there was an absolute dream. She was like my lovely Mexican abuelita. <laughs> and I've come out to this beautiful scene with music playing in the distance. This is Jerez. Hola. <laughs> That's what I mean about cantinas, or oh, let's not get run over. So the doors, uh, like those sort of, um, I don't know what you would call them, like half doors or something, uh, that are like uh, an entry to an old saloon, if you know what I mean. Check out my Zacatecas video where I actually go in one from last year. Um, but obviously it's uh, only about 12 o'clock, so it's closed. 
Um, I don't actually know if it's going to open later. Let's see if we can get shots inside. I can't actually see what I'm filming, but there is a Mexican cantina. Hola. <laughs> Everyone's saying hello to me today. Hola, buenas tardes. Oh, cool. Is it open? It is open. Cool. You've always got like the nice uh, pictures. It's Jesus and Mary and all that. and nice artwork at least in the other one in Zacatecas but it's, it's quite an interesting unique place to go uh, so luego amigos right from what I can gather it, he said it's closed uh, I think they're having like a lock-in or something <laughs> at like one o'clock in the afternoon but look at the wonderful Jerez um, the guys with the guitars just walking along the streets with musical instruments these two buildings actually the orange and the green one this you might remember this from the thumbnail of the video from last year this is where I took it actually just over the road but yeah, another example of awesome coloured buildings, colourful buildings in Jerez, it's amazing. Ah, oh, this senor has just invited me in. Oh, is it like an uh, antique? Uh, no, not English. Me espanol un poco. Oh, okay, it's typewriters and lots of historia. Yes. Oh, okay, camera on loco. So, crazy shrimp. Oh, wow. Cool. Again, you've got like these diner seats around the outside, like these orange. Um, I don't know what material they are, but yeah, there we go. Like a diner. With all these pictures and oh, weapons, guns, crossbows. I don't know. Okay, I can't come to Camadon Loco without having Camadon. And um, I'm actually going to have something, again, Paulina recommended. I should have burritos. I've never had a burrito in Mexico, believe it or not. So I'm just having Camadon burrito up there. I did ask for mezcal as well, should I do that? It might be a bit early for mezcal, but I do have a bottle of squirt in my bag. <laughs> okay, we have the dreaded close-up mezcal shot. Um, yeah, the thing about Mexican shot sizes, um, they're slightly larger than in the UK, um, I would say. <laughs> like 10 times as large. Um, and I've got a bit of limon with it as well. I normally have mezcal, not that I have it a lot, but when I do, I have it with a like fresco or square in a, a large glass um, as I said but you know what you only live once so I'm going to just down this <laughs> at one o'clock in the afternoon <sighs> this is to 2020 look at the terrible lighting but whatever <laughs> beautiful that was actually okay. Oh, here comes the aftertaste. Really in. <laughs> okay, moving on to my first ever burrito in Mexico. Isn't it like Tex-Mex? It's not Mexican, although places in the north of Mexico have burritos. I don't know, but you can see inside. Camarón. Let's um, open it, Hans. Ooh. Big shrimp. Camarón. Definitely Camarón Loco. Okay, I think I'll just try one of the shrimps first. Shrimps or shrimp? Anyway. Mm. Gotta admit, I've never been a huge fan of seafood like shrimp. But ever since I was in Indonesia at a seafood market, really has grown on me. Yeah, the shrimp are really kind of succulent and tender. Just as you would expect shrimp to be really nice I try to figure out who I am not sure what I'm doing here and the days don't work out the way I thought they would and before you there was no one who understood So it's time to say goodbye to the center of Jerez once again. For the last part of the video, we're gonna be heading a little bit out of town, um, closer to where I'm staying and closer to the bus station. Um, so yeah, goodbye central Jerez. You have been magical as always, but it's not over yet. Okay, we've left the center of Jerez and I'm heading to the bus station. I've just picked my stuff up. I'm going back to San Luis. However, there is one final stop, which is literally right next to the bus station. I don't know how I'm going to fit this in my stomach, but you know what? This is Hedes. I'm not going to be here anytime soon in the future. 
So let's make the most of it. Right, here's the place again that has been recommended to me by Paulina. Gracias. It exists, so that's a good start. Come on. All right, let's go. Um, salsa, si. Uh, salsa verde. Oh, okay, si, si, si. Oh, perfecto. Muchas gracias, amigo. Okay, this is a dish I've been wanting to try for as long as I can live. I can already smell it. Oh my god. This is, and apologies for this, video. It should be birria. I can't do it. And interestingly, whenever I say birria or birria, like in English, no one can understand me. So I have to kind of point it out. I must learn how to do the double R. Okay, what's really great is you have the birria. I'll come back to that in a second. But you also have tortillas in there. I guess to sort of mop up the remains, if you know what I mean. Limon and chili and birria, from what I understand, is. Again, it's a bit like um, the um, barbacoa consomme I had in Tula. So it's like a, a stew, like a sheep or goat stew. Um, but what's interesting about it, I think, is you, you know, obviously they asked for whether you want cilantro or cebolla. I said uh, cilantro um, a lot, mucho, <laughs> and uh, cebolla un poco. Um, and it's all kind of mixed together. And they, you know, they have the, the meat in there and all the ingredients. And then they put the, um, the consomme in with the salsa as well. Um, so it's a real mixture and I'm anticipating that the meat is like a slow cooked meat if you know what I mean and it's very tender but we'll see. Okay I do apologise, obviously we're by a main road so I'm having to shout a little bit. There we go. Look at that, look at that meat. It's very hot. Oh my god. So the difference with the consomme in Tula, this because it's got the salsa actually in there. It's so spicy. I mean, the meat, yeah, is tender AF. And I love how the cilantro kind of mixes in. So you have a bit of crunch, if you know what I mean. And the onion. Mm. Mm. Almost tastes like a taco, you know? With that cilantro. Perfecto. And lastly, of course, you can make your own tacos, effectively. Just drain some of the liquid off, put it in. Oh, it's a bit messy, by the way. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> liquid everywhere. <laughs> right, I'm taking a bit of a breather after that monstrous epicness of food. Amazing, next to the Clues as all sign. Let's turn the camera around and finish this video. You're gonna to have to do make do with the light thing, all right? Um, I'm gonna need a truck to take me back to San Luis because I've had three meals today. How do food YouTubers do it? I really don't know. My God. But anyway, there are two things I wanted to say to in this video, very important things. The first one is a word of warning. The next video is episode 10, the final one of my 2020 Mexico series. And in that video, at least partially, there's gonna be a bit of a, slightly bleak, serious and depressive tone to it because throughout this series I've done my utmost, done my best to make these videos as positive as possible whilst not focusing on the dreaded C word, COVID, throughout every single video because I, I think you don't want to see that, you want to see travel as normal. And I also haven't covered anything about me. Every video since I came back from my summer break back in Belgrade has been about travel. 19 videos all about travel. That has all been done for a purpose and I've not said that and I'm going to touch on some of that in the next video. The other thing I wanted to say was about Jerez. Oh my god. This place, Jerez, is spectacular. It's one of my golden six, if not golden three, of top places to come in Mexico. It's just beautiful and stunning and I feel like I'm so fortunate to have had the opportunity to come back here again considering everything that's been going on this year, you know? And I think it's important and I'm guilty of this. I think we all are that we don't treasure places like this, treasure days like this, moments like this, amazing times that we might not have again, you know? And uh, that's what I've taken away from today, to try and remember that these places exist, that you can have times where you're unbelievably happy with where you are, where you almost start crying. And Hedes, for me, is exactly that. So I hope you've enjoyed Hedes. Let me know if you're from Hedes, just like with the last video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this kind of did it justice. I wanted to kind of showcase Hedes again. Um, 
and we're off to San Luis for the next video. Time to get two buses. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Catch you later. A lot of people said to me, how have I kept videos positive? How have I managed to film videos in Mexico when everything is closed? The answer is with difficulty. Everyone's been going through things. They have. You have. <laughs>